Good morning. Welcome to worship on this sixth Sunday of Easter. Uh, one major announcement as we begin worship this morning. Uh, you may know about this already, but we'll be ready to resume in-person worship on Sunday, May 16th at 8.30 a.m. You'll be receiving information in the mail on a postcard uh, about the details, and you can also find information online on our website and Facebook. Uh, I will let you know that worshipers for the indoor 8.30 service do need to register in advance so we can keep capacity uh, at safe levels. <clears throat> Alleluia! Christ is risen! He is risen indeed! Alleluia! Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. There is no end to God's greatness. Lord, you are righteous in all your ways and loving in all your works. You are near to all who call upon you, to all who call upon you faithfully. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Gracious God, you know that we are sinners, and we confess our sins to you, those known to us and those unknown to us, but seen by you. We know that before you nothing remains hidden, and in you everything is revealed. Free us from our sin. Liberate us from our guilt. Work in us that which is pleasing in your sight. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you and forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. 
Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This is the time in worship when we typically celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion and here receive the bread and wine, the body and blood of Christ. And while we worship remotely, we do not have that privilege. But God's word promises that God is still with us all of our lives. And though we might feel the loss of being able to share in communion with one another, Christ still binds us to each other. So while we wait again to receive Christ's body and blood together, we still receive the grace of Christ every day. This is a promise that God makes to us in the waters of baptism that join us to Jesus' death and resurrection. So at this time, I invite you to take some water and make the sign of the cross on your forehead. And as you do, may you recall again God's promise to seal you with the Holy Spirit and receive anew the mercies of God's grace which sustain us in this life and in our new life in Christ. The first reading comes to us from Acts, the 10th chapter, starting with the 44th verse. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So, he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. Here ends the reading. The second reading is from 1 John chapter 5, verses 1-6. through 6. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is truth. The Gospel this day is a Gospel according to St. John in the 15th chapter. Jesus said, As a father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my father's commandments, and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. And you are my friends, if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. I am giving you this command, 
so that you may love one another. This is the gospel of the Lord. Hey, good morning, friends. Today's gospel lesson comes to you, comes to us from John chapter 15, verses 9 through 16. Beautiful, beautiful words today. In my Bible, everything that Jesus says is highlighted in red. I personally really love that because for me, there's no doubt who's speaking. And in today's scripture readings, it's important because Jesus has something super important. It should stand out in our Bibles. It is this. Jesus says, that we are to love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's own life for a friend. He also says that this is my commandment, to love one another. He also says, hey, I loved you first. I loved you before you were even born. I loved you first. And then he tells us to love one another. He also goes as far as to say, as this is my command to love one another. Now, sometimes it's easy to just quickly say, I love you. It's another thing to show someone that we love them. Sometimes there are people in our life that are hard to love. And you know what I mean. There are people that sometimes make it difficult for us to say I love you or to do things for them. There are other people in our life that we are thrilled to say I love you to and to help them out. But Jesus says this, my friends, you don't get to pick. You need to love everyone and to treat everyone with kindness and respect. So my friends, in this next week to come, I really encourage you to live by Jesus's red letter words, to love one another and to tuck it away in our memory that we love each other because Jesus loved us first. How blessed are we that Jesus loved us first. He laid down his life for us on the cross to forgive our sins so that we may have eternal life. What a gift. Friends, this week, love one another and be kind. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this blessing, for the gift of Jesus. Help us to love one another as you loved us. And all of God's people said, Good morning, friends. We just learned an awesome story about Jesus and something awesome that he did. So for this morning, we're going to take a common song that most of you know, and we're going to put an awesome twist on it. So we are going to sing, Jesus Loves Me. But we're going to add in a beat and a few other things that'll be really cool. So this first time around, I'm going to sing it and do it. You guys can just watch. But then the second time around, you can pick it up with me and we'll sing all together. Sound good? All right, here we go. So we're going to put in a beat. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak but he is strong. Sing na 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 ooh na 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 ah na 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 ooh na 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 ah. Yes, Jesus loves me, whoop whoop. Yes, Jesus loves me, whoop whoop. Yes. Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. All right, do you guys think you can pick it up with me this time? Okay, here we go. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak but he is strong. Sing na 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 ooh na 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 ah na 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 Ooh, na 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 na. Yes, Jesus loves me. Whoop whoop. Yes, Jesus loves me. Whoop whoop. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. 
All right. Thanks for singing along and thanks for singing in an awesome way. Remember this crazy, cool story about Jesus throughout this week. See you later, everybody. Friends, as many of you know, my days are numbered. I've been spending some time cleaning out my office because I've been in it for 32 years. You would not believe the amount of stuff that I've accumulated in there. So the other day as I was emptying it out, I came across a file drawer full of sermons going back to 1980. So looking at those, I thought, you know what, I'm just going to preach all of them today. Hope you got time. No, kidding. Don't tune out now. <laughs> but as I looked at a few of them, I reflected on, with just a couple weeks left in this church, what are some of the last words I would want to share with you? And it turns out that our readings today are right at the top of that list. The theme of love and Jesus telling us that we did not choose him, but Jesus chooses you. Oh, that's a big deal. It's huge. So in terms of the love theme, we hear in 1 John and in the gospel, love, love, love. So if we had enough love talk now, are we done? Well, I don't think so. We can never get enough. This is one of the things the dogs I've had over my life have taught me. I'll be sitting at home on the couch watching TV or reading. My legs are crossed, and all of a sudden, a lab head comes up between my legs, and uncrosses them for me, and puts his head on my lap to let me know I'm available for petting. Let's play. Come love me. Dogs are so unabashed with their desire for affection. Well, we're mammals too. And you know what? We can't get enough love either. And frequently in the world around us, there's a deficit of love. We have this innate hunger for love, for acceptance, for being wanted. Now, God knows this. So God continues to come to us in love, in the promise of forgiveness, acceptance, and wanting you. So the big news comes to us in our gospel where Jesus said, you did not choose me, I chose you. These few words make a huge difference. It raises the whole question of who does what for whom. Now we know that for most of us there's a tendency to assume that we are the ones who do the choosing, that we choose God, we choose Jesus. It appeals to our pride and to our ego Now, this is rarely a mean-spirited or malicious thing. It's more of our default setting, isn't it? I mean, after all, that's how we do things in most of our lives. We choose important things, right? We choose spouses. We choose a home, a job, a church, politics, cars. We choose those things. So since that's normal for us, it makes sense that we would apply the same kind of thinking to Jesus, right? But the reality is, we don't get to choose who will save us. This reminds me of something I saw a long time ago when I lived in Stoddard, serving churches there, just south of La Crosse. It's right on the Mississippi River. So in that town, there's a boat launch, you know, bait shop, the whole nine yards, right? And one day, there's this guy going out under the Mississippi River from the launch, and he proudly showed off a new kind of grappling hook anchor he got called a bottom grabber. He was so proud of this thing, he said, finally, I'm not going to have the current pull me downstream. I can stay where I want to when I anchor. Now, by the way, the local wisdom there was the closer you are to the main channel, the better the fishing is. The problem is the closer you are to the main channel, the stronger the current is. So the other guys at the launch warned this fisherman that if he used that anchor, he was going to sink. He said, oh, no, I'm not. It's not that heavy. He thought he knew better. And apparently, he didn't understand physics. So out he goes, tosses his anchor in the water, and right away, two other guys at at the launch fired their motors up and went going after him. And this guy wasn't out there two minutes 
and we could see the bow of his boat is going lower and lower in the water. See, the suction from the current going under the boat pulled the boat under. And that bottom-grabbing anchor, it grabbed the bottom. It worked really well. This poor guy's boat went under. Now, when his rescuers got there, is he going to choose who's going to save him? No. Whoever there is first is fine. We don't get to choose who's going to save us. Now, there's a lot of characters out there who pretend to say that they will save us only to take advantage of us later. That's why it is so good and so important to hear Jesus' words again. You did not choose me. I chose you. Now think about this. If we are the ones who choose Jesus, then our faith is only as strong as we are. It amounts to us trying to hang on to God instead of God holding on to us. You see the difference? Now, God knows this. That's why God chooses us in Jesus. Now, of course, there's still part of us that likes to be in control. So we might say things like, I've chosen Jesus as my Savior, or one of my favorites, God is my co-pilot. Really, if God's a co-pilot, who is the pilot? <laughs> see how tricky we are? Yet admitting we need help, sometimes we find offensive to our pride as if it means we are weak or something. We don't choose Jesus. We don't choose a Savior. The Savior chooses us. Now, it might seem like it's just splitting hairs, but it's a big deal. What we do choose is we choose to let Jesus rescue us instead of running away. See, choosing to let Jesus rescue us is different than choosing who will rescue us. If we're in a boat and it sinks, we are not in a position to choose who is going to save us. The only choice is whether we let those who come to save us pull us out. We have a term for this. We call this surrender. Now, we usually assume that surrender means the same thing as defeat, but that's not, that's not true. Defeat means that we have been beaten. We've already lost. We've been hurt, vanquished. Okay? Surrender means we see a fight that we are not going to win, and it's foolish to take it on, so we will surrender, so we live another day. In 12-step groups, they talk about this as let go and let God. It means to stop trying to hang on to our own power, strength, and ability and to let God hold us instead. Will we try to hold on to Jesus? Or will we let Jesus hold us? Jesus said, I chose you. You didn't choose me. Thank God. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't always make the right choice. See, I need a Savior who chooses me. I need a Savior who rescues me from myself, from my pride, my accomplishments, my power, my abilities. I need a God who chooses me. I need a God who is faithful to me even if I am not faithful to God, who loves me even when I get preoccupied and forget about God. I need a God who will be patient with me. One who will wait while I try to make it on my own. How about you? We've already been saved. The saving part has already been done. So for us to put our attention there, it's too late. It's kind of like trying to change your house plans after the house is built and you've already moved in. We're already saved by Jesus. He's already pulled us out of the water. So the place to put our attention now is to love. Jesus said, this is my commandment, that you love one another. That's what we get to do, to live like we are saved because we are. 
to live in a way that shows the difference. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. So what does this mean? It means to forgive, to sacrifice for others, to be generous with those in need, love your enemies, pray for them, feed the hungry, care for the homeless. Oh yes, we still go to work, we support ourselves, we do all the other things we need to do in this life. But as we do, loving from the heart and flowing from God's love for us, it brings meaning. It brings purpose. It brings freedom. It brings peace. I don't know about you, but I need a Savior who chooses me. Jesus, hold me up. Carry me through the hard times. Oh, you know I'll pretend to make it on my own and you'll even let me. But when I fall, save me. Hold me. Keep me safe. Thanks be to God. We join together confessing our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As you recall, this is a time when we typically receive our offering in this church for the work of this church uh, in the world. Uh, you may do so by using a donate button online. Uh, you can follow the handy text to give options in the bulletin, uh, enroll in direct deposit, uh, or you can uh, drop off or mail in your offerings like the ones we will be presenting in worship today.
pray. Oh God, all we have first comes from you. We give to you with grateful hearts. Use these gifts in all that we are to proclaim your love for all people. Amen. Let us pray for all of God's people. Lord Jesus, thank you for choosing us. Hold us and lead us to be held instead of trying to hang on to you. Grant us the courage to step away from our pride and our desire to be in control. Come to us when our boats start to sink and fill us with the power of your love and your promise to lead us to make it our business to love in this world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh, great God, in a world that often asks, what's next? What else? Lead us to be content and grateful for what we have instead of what we do not. Open our eyes to the richness of the multitude of small things. We thank you for all the signs and smells of spring, even the pollen that makes our eyes itch. We thank you for vaccines and the growing improvement of COVID. We thank you for all the things in our lives that you make holy, those we love, our homes, our work, our cars, all that you've put in our care. So we receive our thanks for these things and all these things we name to you now. Receive our thanks. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God of promise and new life, we pray for the family of Eric Eastland who died young a week ago. Grant them the grace to believe and trust in your promise and sustain them in the days to come that they would know the healing power of your love. We lift up to you all of us who are so weary from COVID and all the other pressures of our time. We pray for those who are lonely and feel cut off, for those who do not know what to feel. Walk with them and all of us and fill us with your peace. And we commend to you those we name to you now who are waiting for healing and recovery. Be their hope, be their peace. Hold them closely and bring them all they need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. So just one announcement, reminder then, regarding our worship life together. Uh, next Sunday, the 16th of May, we will be adding uh, in-person indoor worship uh, that you need to register for. We will continue to be doing outdoor worship at 10 a.m. If it's nice, get out of your cars. If it's not so nice, stay in and tune us in on the FM dial. And we will also be continuing online worship. So... No matter where you are, we can be together and worship.
Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah.